This is Pastor April Pettis, and I'm so excited that you're joining in our show. Thank the Lord. I mean, God is amazing. He's moving by his spirit. And so as we're entering this fall season, I have some amazing guests for you. And we're just going to dive into on what we're going to talk about. But today, I'm just excited about this young lady who is sitting to my right, has a great ministry, great anointing. I mean... I'm just excited about our talk right now. And so uh, today's show is just talking about you, you know, getting into your goals, your dreams, your visions, and hearing the story, your faith story. So it's our faith journey story that we're talking about today. And so I want to introduce to you to Nikki, uh, Nikki Carpenter, Nikki in the city, my girl right here. I'm so glad you're here on the show. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I'm, I'm excited. Like everyone can see I'm excited for sure. Um, I mean, just seeing you, I remember you from Micah. We were in under Apostle R.D. Hinton. Yep. And your aunt, yep. pastor, amen. Amos, yep. Praise God. <laughs> and so that's how we got acquainted with each other, just being in that fellowship yep. and different things like that. And we had came and you it was in dance ministry and mm -hmm. stuff. So that's kind of, I want to get the background of our story. And you and, went to North Park. I and North I went Park. to North yeah. Park. And I don't know, <laughs> did we like cross paths? No, because you were in seminary, right? No, you? I think I was coming at the end of okay. my reign at North Park. Okay. I was graduating. Yeah, two class, and I was two thousand five, and I was like sort of, kind of like coming in at that time. Got yeah. you. Yeah. So we both went to North Park. Yep. <laughs> both know each other through ministry, and so um, what? At, at, just through the years, just seeing you from dance ministry, and you know, Facebook friends and different right. things like that. Which Facebook's a good, you know, good platform for you to kind of reconnect Great with people platform. but I was really just moved by just your testimony Thank you. I mean for real for real and we're going to share that on this faith journey story because um you wrote a book mm -hmm. and we're going to get to the book very yeah. soon but um just tell us first let, let's build our foundation I always like to start in the beginning okay. um your Christian walk how did okay. you get to knowing Jesus you know and everything like that so Thank you for having me yes. first. I'm excited uh -huh. to be here. I'm honored and I'm just happy to build with you as a sister in yeah, Christ. So, <laughs> um, how I came to Christ, it, it was very unorthodox. My parents were married. Uh, my dad is a self-proclaimed Muslim. He became um, a Muslim in the 90s when everybody was conscious and they were trying to get the black man back to yeah. the family. And so I remember going to the mosque with him and they had the hats on mm -hmm. and the hijabs. And I have, you know, memories of that. But then on one hand, my mother was... Um, she was a, a Sunday Christian, you know, mm -hmm. so we went to um, a church, I won't say the name, but you know, mm -hmm. she would cry doing the, the, the songs and doing the choir and stuff, but then mm -hmm. she would just go back to just, you know, like not mm -hmm. really having a relationship with God. And so after my parents got divorced, um, my mom remarried into a family full of ministers, which was mm -hmm. Pastor Abrams, my aunt. And Amen. so I was nine years old when she asked me that I want to accept God is my savior. And mm -hmm. I didn't really know what I was saying. So I did the sentence prayer. Just sort of kind yeah. of like went along with it. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until I was 17 years old when I really made a conscious decision that I wanted to live for Christ and give mm -hmm. my heart to Christ and um, rededicate my life to God. So that's mm -hmm. when I can say I really like had an understanding that, hey, I'm going to live for God at the age of 17. And then mm -hmm. that's what happened. So Wow. Yeah. Wow. 17. I mean, our, our show is dedicated to you young adults yeah. and youth and it's so good to hear everyone's story because mm -hmm. you know sometimes people think that you gotta be in church to get saved I was at home when I yeah. got saved when I accepted Jesus Lord right. and Savior and it wasn't because my parents were pastors my grandfather was a pastor yeah. and stuff and you can think that people have to have it like that and God comes to us yep. at all places in life. So I want to encourage somebody that, yeah. you know, you ain't got to be all like, oh, I got to come to church. Yeah, church is the, you know, the nourishment is yeah. for us to grow. Um, and so you got saved 17 years yeah. old and being saved for real, for real, you know, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot and it's rewarding, lot. but it's a lot because God has given us direction on how we're mm -hmm. supposed to live our life. So, you know, 17, you're going to go to college soon. Yeah. You know, you're dealing with that lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you made a conscious decision. I don't want you to share the conscious decision you made in your journey um, with living for God. So at 17, it 
it definitely was not easy. Like I remember I went through like a pruning stage because me and my cousins, we were all like this. Like you know how you see the pictures of like you sleeping on a on a pallet yes, with your cousins growing yes. up. We grew up like that together. You know, we um snuck out the house together, we mm-hmm. went to the mall to meet boys together, yeah. you know, like so we had that sisterhood of like just doing whatever. And yes. so they were sort of kind of like my my rock. And I remember making a conscious effort to not have like that type of fellowship with them so I was by myself I didn't have any um Christian friends Mm -hmm. uh I went through a stage where you know to each his own but I threw out all my secular music Mm -hmm. and so I was just like okay who am I like where am I I didn't have any friends and so I was I remember praying like God I need you to send some believers into my life because you know I had a church family but they were all older. Like, mm-hmm. I, like, talk about youth department. Yeah. I was the youth department. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> like, right. Me and that's it, you yes. know? So, um, yes. I remember asking God, like, I need some sisters, like, some yeah. Christian believers to come into my life. And slowly, uh, remember, the, do you remember the example house? Like, back in the day, it was, like, in mm-hmm. Chicago Heights. No, I'm the example not house. Side, sorry. It, oh, <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm south side, sorry. <laughs> Uh-huh. So uh, I started going there and mm-hmm. I met like a few um, believers and mm-hmm. I actually met my best friend there and she was a little older, but she was a Christian and um, God started putting these people in my life to help me walk the path yes. and like stick to my decision of, I don't want to say stick to my decision of following Christ, but being encouraged in the community and the yeah. body of Christ and like having people I can like ask questions yes. and um, be honest with like, hey, I'm struggling with this. Like yeah. I'm talking to this yeah. guy. I shouldn't be talking to him mm, <laughs> you know mm. like having that accountability yeah, so yeah. um that's important community is so important because yes. if not you're gonna find yourself like back with the old community mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. back in sin and just not having a a mind to follow christ yeah so, yeah. yeah i mean it, it's good that you're saying this because environment is so important environment is so important Huge. because it really affects the decision that you make yeah. and as much as people be like you know i'm holding in now and stuff like that you know we got struggles yeah I mean, let's keep it real yeah. you know so <laughs> you know with you talking about you know just the secular music somebody may say that's not a big deal for me you know yeah. i can listen to it and keep be going but for some others that could be a sin to them you know maybe even i've you know met young ladies who refuse to wear pants you know and i'm not gonna judge them because they didn't want to wear skirts and stuff so it you know it it becomes conviction to you and what god is delivering you from but one of the things that you know i want to dive into because as you're giving your story is you know you're a beautiful young lady praise the lord you know and i mean for real and you know (laughs) it's only jesus only god knows glory to god but you you said, you know, you get into the word of God, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, man, I, I want to meet a Christian brother. Come you know on. what I'm saying? Who don't? <laughs> who don't? <laughs> Met somebody who loved Jesus, ain't going to knock you upside the right. head, you know, spending on you, taking your money. Glory right. to God. That's another story, another <laughs> show. But you got, you know, you want to meet. So, so you, you may have been through relationships. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Relationships, right? Definitely. Let, let, let's talk about that because this is our faith journey and yes. it's going to get us to, you know, you even writing your book. And so, yeah. you know, you've been in relationships, mm-hmm. you know, and how would you say your relationships were? Like, you know, you like, ah, you just trying different things. What, 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 come on, let, let's talk Girl, about this. Okay. So I don't know if it was just like the 90s during that time where, mm-hmm. you know, we saw uh, Juanita Biden wedding and T.D. Jakes yes. had, you know, like the uh, love song album. I feel like yeah. I came up in that time where everybody in church, all the women wanted to be married. Yeah. So that was like the conversation. The conversation was my Boaz is coming. Yes. At every wedding, it was like, okay, girl, you next. You, you next. next. You yo, ain't got yo, no Bobo. Yo, <laughs> it's Boaz. <laughs> right, right. Mm. Your season is coming, right. right? So I grew up in that in that culture where, you know, I, I have to fault the, the church for that because, you know, it was always about marriage. It yes. was never about your season for education is coming. Mm-hmm. Your season to write your book yeah, is coming. Your season to get into real estate. You right. know, like anything but it was just married your husband yeah. is coming yeah and in many cases uh, a lot of women their husband has not come still yes. you know and they're like well you know what's are you a false prophet like you mm-hmm. know what's going on mm-hmm. so I, because i grew up in that i searched for that throughout mm-hmm. my 20s a lot I, I was you know hey where's my husband i spent yeah. a lot of time 
planning my wedding, you mm. know, at 21, picking out colors, like going, going to Joanne Fabrics, like, I'm going to have this, you know, right, like, right. <laughs> and I didn't get married until I was 30 years old. Yeah. So you have nine years of uh, eating the wrong fruit in the yes. wrong season, you know, so it's not good. So, but you walking but, by faith. Yeah. Right? You I know, think, I mean, because people say that. I, I I'm think walking God, by faith. I'm going to Joanne Fabric because I'm right. believing by faith. Or I'm going but to I think so, so. to everything, there's a season, mm. right? Ecclesiastes said to everything, there's a season, a perfect yes. purpose under heaven. Yes. So God operates in seasons. For mm. some people, at the age of 19, it's your season to get married because it's your season. Mm -hmm. But for me, it was the age of 30. Mm -hmm. That was just my season, yeah, you know? Yeah. So I can trust and, and have faith that even as a married woman now, I have faith that I'll be a mom one day. Mm -hmm. Everybody named mama got pregnant last year. Yeah. Not me. Yeah. It wasn't my season. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm married. Like, what's, what's, yeah. it's, it just wasn't my season. Yeah. So yeah. I'll have faith that I'll, have children one day mm -hmm. because that's God's promise. Yes. But it's just, it's not my season mm -hmm. right now, you yeah, know? Yeah. So even though you have faith, it's still like a healthy faith mm -hmm. that I think we'll, we need to cling to because mm -hmm. I mean, women back then were buying wedding dresses. Yes. Like we were, yes. <laughs> we were, you know, like doing, and it's like, I don't think God will have you do that mm -hmm. right now, sister. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like focus on what he's put inside of you. The, sing the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 7.35 says, the single woman, her purpose is to serve the Lord. Mm. Like, that's that's your purpose, is yes. to serve the Lord. Because once you get married, you got a whole man uh -huh. to serve. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And your time is sort of kind of gone. And, yeah. you know, so my relationship, relationships with men were very unhealthy because when I would start dating, I'm like, is this my husband? Hmm. You know, it wasn't really like a time to like grow and build yeah. a friendship. It was just like, are you my husband or not? You know, right. so I had these expectations of, are you going to be my husband? And then when it would like end, it's like, oh, oh my gosh, you know? Yeah. So I spent a lot of time during that and God had to, to break that off mm -hmm. of me. God had to get me to a place where you hear it all the time. I would hear it all the time yeah. that when you're not th looking for it, that's when it happens. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, when you're not looking. Right. Like, how do you right. not look for it? Right. You know, like, I'm a grown woman in these streets. Yes. Like, I need, yes. <laughs> I'm tired of, you know, yes. coming in the house carrying all these groceries. <laughs> like, how do I not look for it, you know? And on top of that, you got needs, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, Lord, for real. Like, yeah. I'm holding on one more year. But right. after that, <laughs> right. after this, uh -huh. like. See, you, you, you keeping know. it real. You know, <laughs> It's amazing to me how many people just don't want to be real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you're saying so much, which is so good, because I, I said this some shows ago, and it's the truth. You know, we as women were accustomed to build house. Yeah. Play with dolls, yeah. which equates babies. You yeah. know, guys are never taught how to be a husband. You know, they play with trucks and, you know, mm -hmm. even Barbie had her own car, her right. own house, her everything. <laughs> and can't come showing up like, hey, hey. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like in our nature, it's in our nature Very to want so. to be married or, Very you know, want, so. and we don't know how to find satisfaction in being single. And mm -hmm. so you date guys, you yeah. date the small guy, the short guy, the tall guy, the broke guy, the ugly guy. <laughs> The white guy. The white guy. <laughs> the Asian guy. I mean, I can just go keep going yeah. around the road. And you just keep it going yeah. and stuff. Um, when was your defining moment? Because you can go in relationships and say yeah. what didn't work. You know? Yeah. I mean, and you can even, I'll just say, put myself out there. You can easily take from this relationship and say, mm, I like this about him. And I like, and I just wish I could make a man. And yeah. that's not how it works. Because, you know, in your mindset, you think that that's what you should do but that that yeah. is not what you do when did you have your defining moment yeah. uh to say okay let me trust god for real for real so i am a queen of going on a fast mm. like i i'm like hey if something's not happening like yeah. if these things come out only by prayer and fasting fast. so i will yes. push my plate away in a minute like mm -hmm. nope i need to hear from the lord so yes. i went on a fast um before the 30 day man fast I went okay. on a fast before and I, w I had a real conversation with God mm -hmm. like a real like okay Lord I think I was like 27 and I was like if I'm not supposed to be married mm -hmm. just let me know mm -hmm. and I was scared to yeah. ask that question because mm -hmm. I was scared he was going to say you're not right. I've called you to singleness mm -hmm. are you okay with that Yeah. so I was like 
okay, I don't want to ask you, but okay, am I supposed <laughs> to get married? Yes or no? You know, like, right. and just sit back and wait. And so I was on a fast for like, I think like three days and I was just praying and just, you know, okay, Lord, like I, I need answers. Yes. And I had a dream and in the dream, it was the day of my wedding and it was time for me to walk down the aisle and I had on some gym shoes mm -hmm. and just like a, you know, like a regular white dress what I had on gym shoes. Mm -hmm. And, um, I remember looking to my mom, like somebody got some eyeliner or something real quick. I could throw on, you know, uh -huh. and you a bride, you got on gym shoes, mm. you know, me, I love makeup. Yeah. Why am I asking for some eyeliner real right. quick before right. I go down the aisle, <laughs> right? And so I think somebody gave me some eyeliner, I put it on, and my mom was like, okay, let's, let's go, you ready to walk down the aisle? And I was like, wait, where my daddy? And she was like, oh, he, he couldn't make it, he didn't have enough time to make it. Mm -hmm. And so she was like, uh, you didn't give him enough time to make it. Mm. And I'm like, my dad's not gonna walk me down the aisle? And when I woke up, I knew automatically, like, don't rush it. It's mm, not your time. Good. Don't rush it. Wow. And when I got that, I was like, okay, God, I'm, I'm going to get married. Mm -hmm. But if you rush it, because you could very well be married. Yeah. But if you rush it, you're going to walk down the aisle with some uh, gym shoes on. Right. You're going to be fiending right. for somebody eyeliner and need a sharpener yes. real quick. You know, and right. your dad's not going to be able to make it because he probably, he probably couldn't get off work because you rushed the wrong it. wrong person. Yeah. So that mm, happened. Mm. And then I think the second thing that sort of kind of like sealed the deal was, um, which is why God is just so amazing. Like yes. he will find you where you are. I was in my living room and I was getting my hair braided uh, by a girl named Sylvia. And my mom called and she was like, <clears throat> Um, are you busy? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm okay. She's like, I'm at a Christmas party right now. And this woman of God just walked up to me and, and asked me, did I have a daughter? And she was like, yeah, I have a daughter. And she was like, tell your daughter, she is not a reject. And mm. I'm like tearing up, you know, cause I'm like, okay, I struggle with rejection a lot. Mm. And she's like, tell your daughter, she's not a reject. Um, tell her that she, she could have been married. She could have married mm. anyone by now, right. but God won't let her get married. She said, God literally has a fence around her. Mm. And I, when she said that, I was like, oh, like, okay, like, here come that tear. You right, know? right. Because she was like, you know, she wonders, does men see her? She said, men notice her, mm -hmm. but they can't even, like, for some reason, it just won't get yeah, in because yeah. he won't even let them get to her. Right. She won't guard her heart, so he's guarding it for her. Mm. And he's going to come in due season. Oh, God. And he came. That was in December of 2013, no, 12. He came in April for mm -hmm. like five months later. So, but that was like somebody who didn't know me anywhere, just like sort of yeah. kind of had a word like, okay, you got a mm. daughter. I think I got a word for like, right. I'm sorry, you know. Right. Um, and that did it because I knew that I struggled with rejection. Yeah. I knew that I wondered why I wasn't going on dates like that. Like, okay, am I invisible? Like, yeah, wow. Yeah. And I also knew that when I would sort of kind of talk to guys, it just would, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work, mm -hmm. you know? And I was mm -hmm. like, that's confirmation. Like, mm -hmm. God is guarding my heart because he's, the Bible tells us to guard our heart, yes. but we don't really do it, Come you know? On, we we like, mm -mm. okay, I'm going to just, you know. So after then, when that happened, God told me every, um, every, Christian single meet account every eat harmony delete it delete come it on, come trust on. me delete it. I'm like okay but my cousins got me you know I had two cousins they met their husband on oh, those e -harmony. yeah right yeah mm, <laughs> so I'm mm, like mm. delete it he like delete that's not how you're gonna meet them delete it yes. trust me you know so that's what happened <laughs> mm. I, you know it's so much and I it's could so talk much. for days it's, seriously it's so heavy <laughs> you, it's really heavy because you you dealt with so many different things where especially when you're getting close to 30 for women you deal with that spirit of rejection yes. it comes like dang man reject yeah. me you know do you not know who i am do you not know what i have to offer and different things especially when you you know i, I can't say for the folks that's that hood rats you, you know these yeah. hood folks <laughs> that just be you know sleeping with every Tom right. Dick and harry or doing but when you're really sincere and authentic and then you really start liking someone and you know yeah. I, i've never been that person to be a player you know like yeah. a player you know and mm -hmm. you kind of just like you just want to, just a nice guy you know what i mean yeah. i mean I want to go to Denny's. I'm just bringing myself down. <laughs> I want to say the restaurants. I really want to go. But, you know, you just want to go off a coffee or yeah. something and just enjoy. But, you know, it's good that you, you had to settle some things with yourself. 
Yeah. And, you know, you, you talk about this 30 day manifest, which we're going to get to. Yes. But you met your husband. Mm -hmm. OK. All yeah. right. Now, <laughs> I love y'all story because I saw the proposal and I yeah. just it just was a, <laughs> it's a tearjerker for me. It was a tearjerker. <laughs> but I, long, I wish I could have cried. I was so, so much in shock. I, 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 like, saw, I saw it on the video. <laughs> So, you know, you met your husband. How yeah. long have you been dating him? And at this time, how long you guys was dating? So, before he proposed, he proposed six months later. Six months. So, you yeah. guys were dating for six months. Yeah. So, six months you were dating. You getting to know him. Yeah. You know, you guys, good friendship. Mm -hmm. He proposes to you. And even just his story. I mean, he got to come on my show another time. Because his, he has his a, story is... He has an amazing story. Praise the <laughs> Lord. Um, and, you know, but... So, you guys get together. Yeah. You know, um, you get married. But even in your relationship, you guys make a decision to wait mm -hmm. until you get married yeah. to have sex. Now, I know this is foreign. <laughs> it's foreign. And people will think you lying, too. Right? They're like, Stop. Stop. <laughs> it, did, now, did you mention it to him? I want to be real. Did you say to him, hey, we need to wait till we get married to have sex? Or was it no. more of his no, leadership? He's, a, he's a, a believer. He's a man Come, of God. I, so, know, but look, like, I know believers. You know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Don't let no. me say this out loud in Jesus' name. Come on. Every, I mean, so, I know believers. I girl. know men of God who be up here ta, 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 ba, ba, right. and speaking in tongues and be praying. <laughs> And want to get in your underwears. Right. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm so, saying? Yeah. So. No, he. So his. I'll share a little bit of his story. But he was married before. Mm -hmm. And in his first marriage, he was a virgin. Mm -hmm. um, and you know the story. His wife, uh, the second year of marriage, mm -hmm. um, she was diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. And the third year, she passed away. Right. So he was like a born again version yeah. and he knew like i waited the first time yeah i'm gonna wait the second time mm. and so Glory he it God. was just natural i don't think we even had to have a conversation about it it was like it was, like, you know it was have no to have a conversation yeah. what the bible say yeah yeah I say that again <laughs> you don't uh, have to have a conversation you don't have to do a whole dissertation uh, you know said. why you should wait like yeah yeah <laughs> it, it pretty much is clear yes. you know why so yeah we we never had any like we just knew that's what we we're gonna do, like yeah. to honor God. And I mean, it it was hard. Like as it got closer to the wedding day, mm -hmm. I think for him, <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's 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 worth it. Yeah. It's so worth it because Praise it's like God. God will keep you if you want to be kept. Come on, you know, Come like on. and and my mom always say, no shade against Donnie McClurkin, yeah. But that song, you know, we fall down but we get up. You know, but the Bible say now unto him who is able to keep, keep you my favorite scripture. from falling. Yes, Lord. you know. He will keep you from yes. falling. And so I think if you really have that desire to please God, he will let you fulfill it yes. because it pleases him to see you trying. Yeah. He, God know it ain't easy in these yeah. streets. Yeah. You know? And that's why you don't have a two year, three year engagement. Girl, don't nope. get me started. Nine months. Nine months. And only because it was like three weddings that year because it would have been seven months. Yes. <laughs> so we yes. had to accommodate everybody day, you know, mm -hmm. like, okay. But nine months. Nine I couldn't months. go a year. No. And you know, and that's and then because you were you in order. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I feel like this. I feel people, you know, wait yeah. because they're trying to save money. But you know, as our pop my apostle and my pastor always teach us, if you're ready to be a husband or wife, you already have it. To, yeah. to make it happen you know what i'm saying we ain't waiting because it gets you know hot in the in the kitchen <laughs> and you got to bring the fire extinguisher you get what i'm saying so yeah. it's so good that you know you're able to say you know y'all both came into agreement you enjoyed yourself yeah you know what i'm saying enjoyed your honeymoon <laughs> enjoy your, you know and your testimony yeah. you made decision to write it Write yes. it down. Yes. So when God said yes. When God said yes. Come on, give, give us a, okay, a, a, so. a breakdown. Because, you know, I can talk all day. And, yeah. it, you know, the producers <laughs> and everybody just like, come on. Come on <laughs> wrap it on here. So when God said yes, um, it's a woman's journey from rejection to total trust in God's timing for love. Mm. And this book came because... I, I don't know why. I guess I'm just like the children of Israel to like get a lesson. Mm -hmm. Like literally as I was walking down the aisle in my wedding dress, yes. it hit me. 
God has a plan, you know, like yeah. literally, you know, That's even God. though you hear it, you see like, okay, God ways are not like your ways, yes. his ways are high, his thoughts are high, you hear all that, yes. but it took me to like literally walk down the aisle in mm. my wedding dress to like get it, like mm. God, God, you had a plan the whole time, yeah. you know, so this book was just, um, Stories, stories of men yeah. <laughs> I dated. Uh, it's, it's our story of our relationship and mm-hmm. what God did through us. It talks about the 30 day man fast because in February of 2013, God told me to go on a man fast. Mm. And I was like, okay, only one problem. I already don't talk to men. Right, so, like, right. <laughs> yeah, who yeah. are you talking about? Right, you know? Right. And, um, he was like, don't talk to any men. So I ignored it for like a few days and I kept like hearing the urge, like don't talk to any men for 30 days. I'm yeah. like, okay, fine. Mm-hmm. Um, during that time, men who I used to talk to would text me. They mm-hmm. would Facebook me. I'm like, oh my God, right. like out of nowhere. Right. So by like the third guy, I was like, God is so intentional. He's using yeah. his best to guard my heart. Yes. Cause they were gonna come out the yes. woodworks, but he knew like, I don't need her all over the place going to Denny's here and there, you yes. know, like, let me just guard her real quick for the next 30 days. And so did that, came off the fast, um, and a guy who I used to date in Mississippi, like, came on strong in mm-hmm. March, like, look, stop playing, I'm ready to get married, you know? Right, so right. I'm like, okay, I did this fast, like, maybe this, this is it, you yeah, know? Yeah. But I knew I didn't really love him, and so mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, I don't know how to feel about this, but like he saved, he got a job, he loved God. Like I'm just gonna go along right, with it. Right. So we had a conversation. I'm like, okay, um, let's see where this goes. Yeah. And when I hung up the phone, like I kid you not, hung up the phone. That next second later, like I heard God say, "If you open up the door with him, you're gonna miss out with Steve." Mm. And let me tell you, up until that point, you know how some women say they know who their husband are? Mm-hmm. I, I had been very critical of that. I didn't believe that. Come on. I, I never believed that. Because mm-hmm. I'm like, he who finds a wife, not she who finds, you know? Right, right. So when I heard that, like, if you open up this door with him, you're going to miss out with Steve. I was yeah. like, why am I, like, thinking this in my head, making mm-hmm. myself say, you know, like. Right, right. And. Heard it again, like, Steve, you know, Steve just lost his wife. Steve not thinking about me. Right, he not even, right. like, what are you talking about, you know? Mm-hmm. And heard it, like, kept hearing it strong. And so I caught the guy up, and I was like, look, I don't think God is, you know, leading me in this direction yeah. with you. And um, ended that, and then it sat there in March, like, okay, Lord, you, you said Steve, but... Like, I don't believe in chasing a man. Like, huh. I, I don't think yeah. women should pursue men right. at all. Right. So I wasn't about to pursue him. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, wow. You know, now what? I, I just ended a situation that was promising, and I'm waiting on you. And so April, he had a concert coming up, and mm-hmm. I get a Facebook message from Steve. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, this is, right. you know, and he was asking me to help him with his concert and everything, and so um, we started, so we, he called me one day, and the conversation went on for like an hour, mm-hmm. and he didn't bring up the concert at all, Right. and then he would call the next day, and yeah. then he would text, and like, we've been talking every day since then, Aww. Uh, except for one day, one day mm-hmm. we didn't talk, um, I was like, okay, I'm getting close to Steve, Lord, and I I don't know if this is what you want me to do. So right. I went on a fast. Mm-hmm. Another another fast. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, Lord, if I'm supposed I had two things I had put before God, quit my job and um, you know, be with Steve. Mm-hmm. And I was fasting and with my job I worked with students in Agile Gardens mm-hmm. in the hood. Right. So I went through. Right. <laughs> And um, I was, you know, like, okay, guys, my, you know, three years coming to an end. Am I supposed to leave or not? In a dream, I was shopping with two of my students. We were shopping for shoes. Um, all the shoes I tried on didn't fit anymore. Mm. I knew that was God saying, these are no longer your shoes to fill. Yeah. Um, with him, I just had like a piece, just like a, a piece. Mm. It wasn't any like voice. It was just like, right. I already told you, like, <laughs> right. it's a piece about it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I ended up with him. But, what, what makes God so faithful is at my bridal shower, uh, wait a minute, backtrack, that one day I didn't talk to him. 
I didn't do any, you know, Facebook nothing with him. Mm-hmm. I was nervous. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, what if I don't I don't talk to him? Mm-hmm. What if he don't talk back to me? Right. You know, because I deal with rejection. Right. What if he talk to another woman right yeah. now? What if, yeah. you know, like, oh, all this, what if, what yeah. if? Um, so we ended up talking the next day. Mm-hmm. You know, he was so happy to hear from me or whatever. Um, but when I went to my bridal shower, they had all these questions they had asked Steve, and I had to guess the right answer. Uh-huh. And the question they asked me was, you know, so at what, when did Steve realize he was in love with you? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know, you know, when we first went out to ease, you know, they was yeah. like, no, the day you fasted from him, that's when he realized it. Uh-huh. And <laughs> for, for me, it, it, it reminded me of the scripture, like, you know, he who,